Hey View City and welcome to View City Online. We're so excited to have you join us today. We are starting with our new series, You're Invited, speaking all about evangelism and just spreading the word of God. So I hope you guys enjoy this, get your notebooks out, get your phones out to take notes and your Bibles and enjoy this message from Dummy. Come on guys, you gotta back that save, the athleticism of a cat. That was my moment of the week by far, but it's so awesome to be with you guys uh, today. It feels, it, it felt like I've been away for so long, you know, um, and coming back here is so nice. I was only gone for a week, but I'm back here. And uh, if it's your first time here, you're so welcome here. Um, is, it, is my mic a little bit soft or can you guys hear? You guys good? Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so, so I'm just saying it's so awesome to be back, and it's exciting today because we're starting a new series. Now, I always get excited when we start a new series Woo! because we're going to be learning uh, something really awesome over the span of four weeks. So it's like a series. You know, you don't want to watch the first episode and then watch the third and the fourth. You want to you wanna be there chronologically. You want to know what happens. No one dies in this series, so let's, uh, that's awesome. But today, we're starting a series uh, that is entitled, was wonderfully entitled by Sarah Bray. She thought of the name. Got to give a shout out for that. It's called You Are Invited. You Are Invited. And the message that I've got for us today is pretty simple. Uh, it's kind of overly simple, but, but it's really awesome, right? And this whole series is going to be about this, this, this word that I'm sure you've heard before, um, if you've been around enough Christian people for any span of time, a word, a, a word called evangelism. And I'm sure you've heard that word before, and uh, we're going to get into that in this message. But this whole series is going to be about reaching out, reaching out to a world that is broken, a world that is sinful, a world that is needing of a Savior. And we're going to be learning about how God wants to use us to bring uh, the gospel to them. Today, we're going to be looking at what it takes to truly love your neighbor, what it takes to truly love your neighbor. And uh, I'm not the most creative guy, but I'm proud of the sermon title that I've created for today. And if you're taking notes, it's very simple. It's love people. Love people. Not, not too much to it. There's not too much going, not too much going on there, but you'll see where we're getting. So if you've got your Bible here, uh, or if you've got the YouVersion app, you know, now, now that you've got phones, you can have your Bible uh, right in your pocket, which is really awesome. Um, so if you've got your Bible here, you can open up to Matthew 22, verse 36 to 40. And let's read together. Here's what it says. This is, um, yeah. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you so much that we get to be in your house. We're so excited to be here today to hear what you have to say through your word, Lord God. And we want to learn today how we can truly love others. Thank you so much. And we pray that you would bless this time, Lord. Amen. Amen. And you guys, do you guys have any of those friends or you've met those people that are like secretive over like the weirdest things? Like, you know, those people where you're like, hey, bro, where'd you get that jacket? And they're like, chill, chill, man, chill, chill. Like, it's just the weirdest things. Like, you know, someone will be walking and you see they're eating a sandwich and it looks really good. And you're like, hey, bro, where, where'd you get that? They're like, chill, chill. I'm like, bro, what, like, why? What, what significance does that have? Why are you hiding this information from me? It frustrates me so much, man. But well, my brother is saying that to me. It's, not, it's, it's, it's really not me. I'm, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm like... <laughs> but I feel like one of the biggest oppositions to the growth of the kingdom of God are this phenomenon, that I'm, I'm just going to call it that, of secret Christians. Because I don't think it's, it's possible to be a secret Christian. Or it should be really difficult to be a secret Christian. 
Because if you are a Christian and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, which is the best decision that you could ever make, by the way, you can look forward to an eternity in heaven with Jesus. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. I know the food is going to go in. It's going to slap. Everything is going to be on top. It's going to be awesome. And if you are a Christian, you're probably aware that when we die, there's one of two destinations yeah. that we're going to go. Yeah. And that's a reality. We've got heaven yeah. and we've got hell. Yeah. And the challenge for me is asking myself this question. Do I truly love people if I know that they're headed for an eternity apart from God and I do nothing about it? I can look at myself in the mirror and ask myself that question. Do I truly love people? If I know that they're going to an eternity apart from God and I do nothing about it. Think of it like this. Imagine if you're a doctor, right? I'm sure there's some some budding doctors here. Some some are going to get accepted. Come on, we're praying for that. Imagine if you're a doctor and you see a patient and, and you, you know, they go through the scan and you're the person that, that is, is looking at the scan, you know, you're analyzing it, you know. Uh, have you guys watched that series, what's it called, Scrubs? That's a, that's a, that's a cool series. And, and I always like, you know, in the intro where they put the x-ray against the light and you kind of see it coming out, but that's not my story. <laughs> if you're, this, imagine that you're this doctor and a patient comes in and you see the scan and you're analyzing it and you discover that they have a terminal illness. But you don't want to tell them because you don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Oh, it's going to be awkward. You know, I don't want them to cry. I'm nervous. I'm shy. So then I tell them, no, no, everything is fine. There's nothing there. You can go on. If I do that, I failed at my duty. Yeah. Yeah. So the first point, if you're taking notes, is that if you truly love people, you will share the gospel with them. I could get off the stage right now because that is the crux of this message. If you truly love people, you will share the gospel with them. We're going to be looking at the example of this really cool guy in the Bible. His name was Paul. You probably uh, might have heard of him before, but you can read him you know, in the New Testament. Most of the things that you'll find there were written by this guy, Paul. And he was someone whose life was radically changed by God. And he went from persecuting and killing those who believed in Jesus to sharing the gospel with those who didn't know him yet. So this is an awesome guy. I think we should be, we should be listening to him in this part. We're reading out of 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19 to 23. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19 to 23. Here's what it says. Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under the law, even though I I am not subject to the law. I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I'm with those who are weak, I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone and do everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. Wow, I love that. I, I just love this, this, this segment of scripture because I really see an, an urgency here from Paul. And, and the first kind of question that I ask myself coming out of this passage is, am I willing to stretch for people? Sure. Am I willing to put myself in a position that I'm uncomfortable or maybe a position that, that, that isn't really, you know, me in a sense that, Am I going to relate to this person, find some common ground with them so that I can share the good news with them? I think that often we, we, we shy away from situations because 
There's people that are maybe labeled a certain way. You know, in school, that was the big thing. You know, you don't want to be with the weird people because you want to be with the cool people so that other people think you're cool. And, you know, you don't want to associate with certain people. They dress a certain way. Uh, they speak a certain way. They make funny noises. And you just don't want to be associated with that. But I'm sure if Paul wanted to go on, he would have said, I'll be weird if that means the weird people will get saved. I can be crazy if the crazy people will get saved. And we can apply this to our context because it doesn't mean we have to change who we are. But Paul says here that he tries to find a common ground with people. But I think sometimes we don't make that effort to even step out and start a conversation with someone. Maybe we write them off before we even start speaking to them. I think we need to get back to that where we connect with people. Let me find out a little bit about you because there's something so important that I have to share with you. Maybe it's not in your first conversation with them. Maybe you've got to build that relationship with them first. But I think we should always have that in our minds and in our hearts that we want to share something so amazing with them. Paul found common ground with people. He connected with them where they were at. He was vulnerable. It says he lived and, and shared in the weakness of those who are weak. He was vulnerable with people. He, he, he was able to relate. He was a, people were able to relate to him because he showed them that side of himself. I find that so amazing. When we connect with people, we open up opportunities to share the gospel with them. And the second question that I ask myself when I read this scripture is, do I do everything I can to, share, to spread the gospel? It says here that I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. That scripture, it's not too specific in what it's, it's saying, you know, it says, I do everything. I don't know what everything includes, but I love this saying that, that, that some people say is that I'll do anything short of sin yeah. to reach people yeah. to Jesus. I love that. Are we doing everything we can to spread the gospel? Paul realized something very important, that he could not keep something so good to himself. You see, when, when you get saved, and, and if you've made that decision to, to have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you get saved, that's not the end of the journey. It seems like, you know, people would, would, would have you believe that it's the end of the journey. You are saved. It's awesome. Now, go on and, and, and live your life. But it's the beginning. It's the beginning because he saved you, but now he wants to use you. Now he wants to use you to bring others this amazing good news that we have received ourselves. So we get to this, this word, this word evangelism. I'm sure you've heard it if you've been around, you know, a Christian person at some point. But this word evangelism, it's not too complicated in, in, in what it means. I'm going to use a, a bunch of different uh, definitions here or descriptions of what this word means. And first, I'm just going to use the, the classic old stock standard Oxford Dictionary definition of evangelism. To spread the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. I love this, this description of it by this guy called Bill Bright. He says, sharing the good news about Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. I love that definition of evangelism. And what I get from that is that we obey God and we leave the results up to him. That's what it is. That's what evangelism is. We don't have the power. The power comes from the gospel. Here's what it says in, in Romans uh, 1 verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First the Jew, then the Gentile. For me, one of the most nerve-wracking things about sharing the gospel with someone is what if they reject it? You know, what, what if it's weird? What if it's awkward? What if they hate me? What if they try and bite me? I don't know. What if it, you know? But it's like, I, I put this pressure on myself that I have to get them saved. That, that, that I have to say the right things and, and say the right words and say this at the right time and, and create this mood, create this atmosphere. And it's really not true. Because what I see here in Romans 1 verse 16, it said, 
Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone, not the power of Dumi, not the power of James, of Sarah, of whoever you are. It's not your power. The power comes from the gospel. That's where it comes from. So you don't have to worry. You can share the gospel in confidence, knowing that the power comes from God and not from yourself. It's, it's freeing. It's freeing because you don't have to put that pressure on yourself. We obey God and we leave the results up to him. And we know that God's timing is the best and God is so faithful. So that's so awesome. And you might be hearing this word gospel, not really knowing what to make of it, not really knowing really what it means. But the gospel is, it, it, it's, it, if you break it down, it's actually quite simple. You can say the gospel is the good news. If you would translate it, the gospel is the good news. And then what is the good news? Well, the good news is that while we were still sinners, while we were still in our sinful state, God made a way for us. He sent Jesus Christ to die for the sins of all. And because of that, we have a way back to a right relationship with God and we'll be in eternity with Him one day. It's, it's, it's amazingly, you can kind of sim- simplify it down to a few words and sentences, but it's something so significant that you never out- outgrow. You never outgrow your need for the gospel. It's not something that when I was 15 or 16 or 14 years old, it was so powerful. I got saved because of the gospel. And now that I'm 20 or 18, 19, it doesn't really mean much to me anymore. It's something that each day we can remind ourselves of because God is so good. good. God is so good. Romans 3, verse 20, Romans 3 verse 23, for everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God's glorious standards. The gospel is so amazing. It's so amazing because it shows this love of God that is so scandalous, that doesn't really make sense because we don't deserve it. And by our worldly standard, our love is based on condition. But we see this amazing love that God showed us. And do we have to get right before we receive this gift of salvation? Here's what it says in Romans 5, verse 6 to 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though a good person, though for a good person, some might die, might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that answers that question. That do you have to get right before you receive this, this gift of salvation? No. Sure. Because it says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. And you might be asking, now, how do, we, how do I spread this gospel? You know, we speak about spreading this gospel and sharing this gospel. How do we spread this gospel? Romans 10 verse 17 says, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. So we can share that good news with our friends, with our family. I, I, I always find it so difficult when I think of it like, you know, the gospel needs to spread around the world. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I've got to go to like Cambodia and yo, <laughs> India, and then I've got to go. No, you don't have to do that. Because if everyone where they were shared the gospel yeah. with their world, yeah. the world, the gospel sure. would reach yeah. the whole world. I love the, the, this, this one uh, a pastor, he, he uses this term, he, he, said, he calls it fra- frangelism. It's a bit of a weird word, but it, it kind of makes sense. Because you want to reach your family, yeah. your relatives, yeah. your associates, yeah. and your neighbors. Yeah. Sure. Start with those people. Don't think of the world as the world. Think of it as your world. Who's in your life? Exactly. Your family, yeah. your relatives, the people you associate with your neighbors. Those are the people that are in your world. And I really believe that, that there's people here that you have
have people in your life that you so desperately and so dearly want to share the gospel with and there's something just holding you back. I want to encourage you again with Romans 1 verse 16 that says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And it's the power of God that brings salvation to your parents, to your brother, to your sister, to your friends, to the people in your school, to the people that you love, to the people that you don't love, to your neighbor, to the annoying neighbor, to the neighbor that doesn't bring your ball back over after you kick it. It's for everyone. What an amazing message. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. If you enjoyed this message, why not share it with a friend? Um, and you can, you can send them that link and copy this link um, to this video. Also, if you made a commitment to give your life to Jesus today, please message us on Instagram, which is at so that we can connect with you. Bye guys and enjoy your week.